Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at the TS-65D type made by Takahashi, introduced in 1970. It's an unusual telescope in several ways. It's got a, a thousand millimeter focal length, 65 millimeters aperture. It's a triplet semi-apochromat. So what is a triplet semi-apochromat? What does that mean? Well, an apochromat means that uh, three colors come together at the, at the focal plane. And uh, so that's well defined. A semi-apochromat is not well defined. Takahashi says that it has one third the chromatic aberration of a regular achromat. Um, now, why would you do that? This is about an F-15 telescope. It's uh, already got 65 millimeters and F-15 or so has almost zero color anyway. Why would you do that? Uh, they're trying to make a statement here, folks. They make a triplet, a really fancy, sophisticated piece of glass, three glass elements. This is not fluorite, remember. This is just uh, three regular types of glass put together to make a, a triplet. And it's got less color. Now in these days, a 65 millimeter, I mean, people were obsessed with having, apparently, having reduced color, reduced to zero. As you can see later on, they went to the fluorites and so forth, where you have zero color and in a short focal length. So uh, apparently this was meant to be a very big deal. And I think it probably was a very big deal. And this is the first triplet semi apochromat made in Japan, at least uh, mass manufactured in Japan. So, why did they do that? It's, it's designed to be shock and awe for the other brands. Uh, Nikon and, and Pentax and Goto Kogaku had dominated the market for many years. Takahashi was a new player on the block and they wanted to really make a splash. Well, this telescope apparently made a big splash. It's a big, in a literal sense also, this telescope in total weighs about 45 pounds. So it's a big telescope. It's a heavy telescope for a 65 millimeter telescope. That's a whole lot of weight. This is a large telescope. This is a 77 millimeter tube diameter. Why did Takahashi make the tube diameter 77 millimeters? Uh, it's unnecessary. Uh, it seems like overkill. It's also on a gigantic mount. You can see this thing is a monster. And it's uh, just a huge telescope. I believe that was meant to, uh, again, introduce shock and awe into their competitors. So let's have a closer look at this Takashi TS-65 D-Type. The original TS-65 had uh, a big capstan bolt here. And you could loosen that and adjust the uh, altitude that way. But it was not very precise. And it was uh, always subject to being in danger of falling down. Well, on this one, on D-Type, they put in this kind of a standard, this is standard nowadays, uh, a bolt that pushes in on a, a finger inside there. And this thing, if this is loose, and of course, you always want to have your Takehashi wrench, maybe attach that to your keychain. Anyway, if you have that um, loose, you can adjust this, change the height of that, change the latitude. It's got a nice little lati latitude indicator though. Of course, if you're gonna do astrophotography, you're gonna probably want something a little more precise than that. But you can set your latitude there, lock it down, everything's nice and firm, then you cinch this down and everything's good. So uh, that's how you adjust this one for the uh, altitude. The scope also features a sliding, a rather nice sliding draw tube. Friction clamp here. There's your focuser. Your focuser doesn't have much travel, but it doesn't need much. You're going to be able to slide things back and forth here, slide your eyepiece back and forth to accommodate a star diagonal or straight through. Lock it down here. Very nice. And you can even lock down the focuser here. I now have the scope set up with its piggyback camera device. This is a clamp-on device, like so. This is, of course, very flexible. You could turn the camera this way or that way. Um, this was an option on the TS-65 D-Type 
Whereas on all the TS-65s, the original TS-65s all had one of these attached. Uh, you may remember, they were attached right to the clamshell. So this was an option on this particular scope. You could do piggyback astrophotography pretty easily because you could polar align this thing quite well using the finder. Let me show you. This is what it looks like through the finder on the TS-65 D-Type. You can see that the reticle there is designed to be a polar axis finder. With some instructions, you can uh, polar align the scope very closely. You get really good photographic results. Take a look at this interesting objective cell. Isn't that interesting? The optics on this thing are superb. They're absolutely perfect. As you would expect. Here I have three telescopes set up side by side. Over here we have the Unitron 114. It's strictly here for comparison. A lot of you are familiar with that size. You know what that telescope's about. It's a 62 millimeter telescope. Here is the Takahashi TS-65, the original 1967 version, uh, with the interesting little camera piggyback mount up here and so forth. 65 millimeter, 900 millimeter focal length, almost the same as the uh, Unitron. So it's a very comparable scope. This is another 65 millimeter telescope. This is the TS-65D. Look how much bigger it is. It's on a big B mount, a huge, beefy, robust mount. They put scopes as big as 90 millimeter on this, uh, on this mount later on. I'll give you a close-up of all the mounts so you get a sense of how big they are with respect to each other. Okay, here we have the Unitron 114. Classic Altaz kind of a mount. This is the TS-65 mount, the first one, 1967 version. This is the D mount, much bigger telescope mount, heavier. Everything about this is much more robust. Tonight, there'll be a showdown. The showdown is between the Goto model 1031 from uh, around the 1970s or so. And the Takahashi TS-65D. We'll see which one's better. Remember, there were a lot of people in Japan that were big fans of Goto and Nikon. Nikon and Goto were the premium scopes. Let's see if the uh, little usurper, little? <laughs> The bully usurper Takahashi can overcome the greatness of Goto and Nikon. Let me show you something. Here's the Goto. It's normally the same scope, 65 millimeters, 1,000 millimeter focal length. The Goto is a doublet. It's Goto quality. Now, who won the battle? Well, Takahashi edged out the Goto. The Goto is just superb, just a beautiful telescope. Not sure if it's uh, if it was worth the trouble, but I'll tell you this: the Goto actually sold for more in those years than the Takahashi did, so the Takahashi was a good bargain.
I think you can see here why Takahashi went with such a big tube diameter. The Goto has a tube diameter of 80 millimeters. It's a monster too. <laughs> so these things are monsters. Huge, way unnecessarily huge for 65 millimeter telescopes. Compare that with the Takahashi TS65. This is about the same telescope. It's only uh, 100 millimeters difference in focal length. This has a 68 millimeter tube. Uh, a little bit more compact, a little more portable. It's very interesting that Takahashi came out with the TS65 D-Type 1970. About a year later, they came out with this. This is the TS65 S-Type. It is exactly the same objective. It's a triplet semi-apochromat, 1,000 millimeters focal length. The tube diameter is down to a 68 millimeter tube, much more reasonable for that sized aperture. I'm not sure quite what the deal was with the big tube diameter, but I think it may have had something to do with the size of the large Gotos and Nikons at the time. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the Takahashi TS65 D-Type from 1970. Thank you very much for watching.